Well friends, we are back again today and I have a bunch of Q&A questions that still have not been answered and I wanted to sit down. Uh, I say today, it is it is today, but it is evening. Let me tell you the time of day. See how it's dark outside those windows. What was the reason you picked the name Tobin? Will you be doing most of the homeschooling in the new kitchen or in the large living area? Do you or have you ever suffered from anxiety and or panic attacks? Are you concerned you will feel cut off from the rest of the house in your new kitchen? I am in the future Mega Mama Kitchen. Now, I do have some garage questions, but this Q&A is going to be all the things Q&A. We haven't done one of these in a while because we've been talking so much about the garage, but you can see things. There's a panel, there's a ladder, there's a variety of tools happening. Things are happening. A lot is going on electrical wise and I was no help to Travis because I had him run me to all kinds of Jamarell adventures were going on this week. So this weekend uh, he's going to be doing boxes and things. I, I believe that's what's going on. And these Q&A questions, I'm just going to roll through the list. We will be hopping all over the place. So if you're new here, buckle up because we're going to we're going to be a jumping. Okay, ready, set, let's go. Thank you to Keto Cycle for sponsoring today's video. Go to ketocycle.diet forward slash Jamarell Stewart. Use code Jamarell10. This promo code gives a 10% discount to all subscription plans. Alicia asks, what is your favorite part of this type of career? So I didn't mean to have this whole other career, but yet here we are. So I absolutely love connecting with mamas all over the world and I love sharing and I love encouraging. So those, those are my favorite parts right there. And another question. Okay. We've got some business minded mama questions happening. Uh, run to the roar says, if you didn't do what you do, what would you do? Hmm. It's a little riddle there. I don't know if I would have returned to nursing or not. I just, assumed that once I got into nursing that I would continue on and get my RN and there's a lot of nursing programs that are evenings and weekends and online and I thought I would just keep picking away at that. There was a whole chain of events that led me away from that and without turning this whole thing into for real a business minded mama Q&A, I really felt the Lord put blogging on my heart. And it was like, you know, just a constant, constant stirring and constant uh, push in that direction. So I know somehow I am where the Lord wants me to be after this uh, more than a decade that I've been involved, that I've been sharing online and building a business online and all I've come through and all I've learned and all the trials by fire and just jumping out with great ideas and stuff work. A some amount of throwing spaghetti to the wall and seeing what works and a whole lot of testing and my online business success isn't a fluke because I've worked my brains out in the process. Because I, I have been following uh, the Lord and direct the direction that he pointed me a while ago when I was kind of at a crossroads with, am I going to focus in on nursing or, but I really like, I could just lay that nursing idea down and I could just blog. And I remember the freedom in kind of jumping out wild and crazy and just blogging and not, not even doing it thinking I was going to make a more than full-time business out of it that brought my husband home full-time in 2012, several years before I even started over here on YouTube. So it has always been on my heart though to write books and to share and encourage whether that is in the form of speaking or not. So even like when I was 10 or 11, I remember at school taking family pictures to school and like gluing <laughs> some of them down in this notebook, uh, try, trying to write a book at that time about some of the things my mom and I have gone through. If the Lord didn't guide me in this online sharing adventure, I know writing and also other creative endeavors would have followed. I'm always one who likes to have projects and likes to stay busy. I don't think busy is bad. I think that there are gifts in me and there are things in me and there are gifts in you and we have to use those. And so for me, I'm, I'm always busy, busy using my gifts or at least trying to. What was the reason you picked the name Tobin? 
So Tobin's name means God is good, and it was a couple different names Travis sent me. Uh, he asked me the name that I like, and I have videos, Q&A videos during my pregnancy that gets into the name, but long story short, out of the names that Travis sent, I was like, oh, Tobin, I like that, and it means God is good. I think his name is Tobin. Are you concerned you will feel cut off from the rest of the house in your new kitchen? No, I'm not concerned about that because the rest of the house is also going to get renovated and remodeled. We just, we have to live here in the meantime. So they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this kitchen. At the same time, we're remodeling our main living space areas. That doesn't sound like fun to me. That sounds like I have to load up 11 people and go rent another house or stay at a hotel for months and months and months. I mean, who, who wants to do that? Who can do that? So we're doing the kitchen and then we're going to do other stuff. And when we are done, everything will flow and make more sense. It's just right now it's kitchen time. Then it's going to be gotten and redoing things in the main part but we have to have places to function and live and work in the meantime so whenever we're doing a lot of the uh, inside main living area parts and pulling it all together cohesively with this kitchen we'll still have this kitchen to function in and uh, if it's heavy like destruction days <laughs> in here um, demo days, I guess that's what I'm saying. You know, for a week or two, we could probably stay at a hotel local and, you know, come back and forth for our animals every day and such. But we're not to that part yet, so my mind's not going there yet. It's kitchen, and then it'll be next part. And when we're done, everything is gonna flow. Will you be doing most of the homeschooling in the new kitchen or in the large living area? So we have always been kitchen homeschoolers. I mean, of course, unless, you know, we're taking the, the quilt outside for a picnic or reading outside or uh, field trips and those sort of things. But as far as when we actually like get down, uh, you know, core book work, everyone's spread out, it's at the kitchen table. At the farmhouse, I actually had two different rooms that I used as school rooms. And so I can say, we played the school room game. So we did some of the school room stuff there. We still would end up at the kitchen table. It was work to go into that other room and to buckle down there. It made more sense with our life flow to be in the kitchen because I'm always what am I doing? I'm cooking. I'm doing meals for my family. I've got something on the stove. I've got bread in the bread machine. You know, there's things that need done in the kitchen. Someone needs a cup refilled or whatever. It was easier for me at the farmhouse for us to all just be in the kitchen. And at the forest house, let's see, we did have, our table was in the dining room. Um, the forest house I would have kids spread out at that table, but also the island in the kitchen and our little futon sitting area there, you know, we would just spread all out as far as that goes. In this house, most of the time we are at that dining room table. I do have kids that will take smaller tables and sit at the couch. I have some kids who sometimes take their work to their desk, sometimes work in the living room, sometimes work on the back porch, work in the basement, but the hub, the hub is still the big table. So my vision for this kitchen, we're gonna have a 16 foot table here and that is gonna be our hub. And so I'm excited because I'll have my desk and a big computer monitor and such over here. So if we need to watch science videos on owl pellets, you know, basically we'll have a TV screen to the side and I can pull up extra school videos and things. I just think this space is going to be a very good living space and homeschool space for us as well. Do you or have you ever suffered from anxiety and or panic attacks? So I can say um, the the panic attacks that I have had or that level of feeling like panic attacks has def was definitely when I was working as a nurse. And I have shared some of those before. It just absolutely off the charts, insane situations and scenarios and times. Um, I had several different facilities and hospitals I worked at and some of them were not the best. 
but I worked there in those different seasons because they paid more for the PRN shifts. And basically, uh, if that makes sense to you or not, what it meant for me was I could be home with my children more. So I might work at a place that may not have been the best facility or may not have had the best like patient to nurse ratio, but they paid me well. And so I could be home with my kids more but in turn, yes, I would get in situations where I would feel like I was gonna have a panic attack or have all this anxiety. And so I put myself in those situations. 42 year old Jay Morrell totally realizes what, you know, 24 or 25 or 26, you know, those years I was his nurse, now I see. But at that time, it was just a numbers uh, situation for me where I wanted to be home with my kids, right? And so I wanted to get all those hours in on the weekend so I could, like Monday through Friday could just be my dream homeschool mom a week and pour into my children all week. And so that was also some of the, the pressure though, because you know, a lot of times at work on the weekend, I'd lock myself in the bathroom and I'd cry because I miss my children so much. So just the situations us mamas, <laughs> we just, I tell you, I, I, I laugh, but mom, mamas who've had to hustle and grind and do what they need to do to take care of their families, will understand and so if I laugh I just laugh at myself and laugh at the experience and laugh at the memories and that's even a stress release so that was some of my uh, high pressure times I will say uh, running a big business and having a lot of people who work for me and all the demands uh, yeah that can be stressful as well too so I have a lot of times where I pull back and I practice a lot of casting my care on the Lord, asking uh, Jesus to show me things, help him give me a clear vision, help him direct my steps and make them sure, and just really uh, walk out the path that he wants me to be on. Doesn't mean that it is easy, breezy, and nothing is hard, and there's no work to do. There's so much work to do. And so as a business owner, one of the things that I have been walking out and doing for these 10 years like one of the first things I learned um, and have to continue to like go back to this this is what you need to do this is what you need to do is just hiring out absolutely everything that doesn't have to have my face stamped on it no one else can sit here in my mega mama kitchen and answer these questions for you but I got a boatload of other stuff that I can hand off and can get done and I don't even have to see it once I hand it off it just please please do this so years ago you know I would start with one person I would have one person for a while they may go they may not work out they may stay for a couple years and then at one point I had two people I think now I'll be up to 12 people sometimes so those are the kind of things like Jay Morrell how do you do it or this exact question do you suffer from anxiety or panic attacks I make it my life's mission to try to not have anxiety or panic attacks and part of how I do that is I get help as long as the Lord helps me be successful, then in the business realm where I could have some anxiety and panic attacks, I just continue to hire out help. Okay, so that, that's what you get from me. Do you think you will go back to the nursing profession again? No, I don't think I will go back to nursing again. And I know you long timers who watch, you know, watch all the videos, you can answer this for me. Um, but I love to say <laughs> that I never, have an evening where I'm like, man, I'd love to go work an 11 to seven nursing shift tonight. Um, of course, I love the people. There were many things I loved and enjoyed about nursing. I love the, the flexibility it gave me working a real world job to still be home and homeschool my children. I don't see myself ever going back into nursing. You know, things can always change. I will do anything I ever have to do to take care of my family, but it is not a goal, goal of mine to go into nursing and push that med cart or any of that, if I can help it. What is the best part of being a mama to grown up children? I tell you, so, you know when it comes to, to these grown ups in my life, um, I won't talk about them and what they're doing because they're grown ups. And I don't talk much about what my kids in general are doing, right, for their own privacy. Because, um, you know, three quarters of them don't even know that mama does this stuff on the internet. And you may, some of them don't even know what the internet is, you know. So I work hard for, for privacy and boundaries with that. But I will say, I've got some grown ups in my life. And 
it is just super super good and wonderful <laughs> uh, to watch them soar and to do all their big grown-up things I feel like I'm just I'm this cheerleader on the sidelines whether they realize that I'm there being their loudest cheerleader on the sidelines or not because grown-ups have all kinds of people in their lives right all kinds of people who care about them and relationships and good situations and you know work and just ev everything and so I feel like I am just here waving the pom-poms also I love any detail send me a Facebook message call me on the phone come over in the evening show up on a Saturday and I'm I'm there and I just love all of it so um, that's my experience so far in being a mom to grown-ups as well it was a privilege to be their mama when they were little and I knew I'm so thankful that I had the perspective of what a privilege it was to be their mama while they were growing up I'm so thankful I didn't miss too much I'm sure I mean you know none of us are perfect I'm sure there's things I missed and things that went over my head and opportunities lost but for the most part uh, to the best of my failed human ability uh, I was there and we did it and now that they're grown it's just really wonderful to sit back and and watch them do their grown-up things so that's what it's like for me uh, having these grown-up people in my life is there anything you already regret worry about with the new kitchen no I don't have any regrets yet I um I would like like to be in it in 2022 it'll be great we got our quote back and uh, everything lined up with our drywall person subcontractor who's gonna do the drywall and so I think we're getting really close to that I mean again Travis has to finish what he's doing and that's another inspection but already lined up drywalls next and, and we're doing things when do you find time to sleep seems like you are always busy not that that's a bad thing so no I sleep eight or nine hours a night I definitely need my sleep um, it'll if it's a night where I've been filming in the kitchen or doing a video like this I mean it's not that late right now but I mean if I work until 11 or midnight which happens then I'm sleeping until 7 or 8 the next morning when I'm in a good rhythm and such um, I can be in bed by 9 or 9.30 and read a little bit and be asleep a little after 10, get up a little bit after 6. I'll say in the last few months I had someone who was doing my nails and just, you know, you chat, right? You chat <clears throat> whenever you're having your nails done. And she's a sweet young thing. And she said, uh, well, what time, what time do you go to bed and, and what time do you get up? Anywhere between 9 and midnight and she laughed. And you know, sometimes people laugh and you let it go when she wasn't being me, but she laughed and I was like, okay, I, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> but what's funny? What's funny about that? And she goes, well, it's just such a big window. So different life situations, you know, she could go home and have her routine and do her things and, and get to bed at the same time every night. I'm sorry to say it again and again, but I mean, it's my life. Add a bunch of kids, add a full-time business at life dynamics I mean we have I was looking at the calendar you know next Thursday we have a, a big homeschool thing that's going to be in the evening and sometimes we go roller skating in the evening or sometimes it's a church thing and I mean, sometimes from a church thing you might not get home till 9 30 or so and then you still have life I mean I'm not a robot right so if I get home at 9 30 doesn't mean I get to go to bed at 9 45 um, I might be going to bed at 11 15 and that's not even with me doing any filming work so all that to say I definitely am an eight hour sleeper love to be a nine hour sleeper and it's a sliding scale uh, and I can I can go to bed at nine and I can get up at five and push the next day and then that next day who knows what happens and by that evening it's 11 27 by the time I'm getting in bed and I will sleep the following morning probably till 8 <laughs> make up a little bit for that those few extra hours there and keep on moving I'm not complaining about any of it but I definitely get my sleep I don't do any of that mess of that four hours a night or six hours a night I did that I did do it and I did it I tell you that year that uh, my blog that became a full-time business way back in the day really took off 
guess who was hustling and doing all that work and, and pushing that around and making it happen? It was me. And I was definitely burning the candle at both ends. Now that was a small window of time in my whole life. Okay, it was a, a heavy hustle year. And I did it. I worked a few hours in the morning before the kids got up. I worked during nap time. As soon as dinner was done, like by 7 p.m., I was back to working and I'd work, you know, late. And so totally during that time for over a year, I was on four to six hours of sleep every single night. And I was getting in 70 hours a week of hard hustle. And I busted my neck during that period as well, but I did it. I don't know if I get a trophy or not, but that's my life experience. So. I don't want to live like that because I, I have done the hard work, uh, hustle and grind to birth the vision and get something off the ground and really make it into something. So my goal now, even though I still work very hard, is to do things like be kind to myself by getting eight to nine hours of sleep, uh, be kind to myself by reading my Bible and drinking my coffee in the morning. Uh, I can't so much nurse my baby while doing that now because now that Tobin's a year, you know, he's all into grabbing things and everything else is more exciting than actually nursing. So my routine lately, not that I don't think you've asked, has been I set an alarm and put him back in the bed with me and let him nurse in the morning uh, before I'm able to get out of bed. So like if my alarm for myself is set to 7 or 7.30, I will set a first alarm for like 6.30 because, I mean, he sleeps like a champ to bring him into the bed and let him nurse because if I wait, then he, he doesn't care about me. He's all about daddy. Dad, 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 all about daddy. Crawling on daddy. Who is that mama with that stink milk anyway? <laughs> we don't need that. So I've got to get him while he's sleeping. So anyway, there's a little bit of uh, insight into my sleeping pattern. What does your daily routine look like as a mom, a homeschooler, and a full-time worker? Well, so of course, Travis has been home full-time since 2012. And so many videos and articles and things I have shared about that. That was based off the success of my business and several years before I even started playing around on YouTube. The whole point of him coming home full-time in 2012 was instead of hiring a full-time mother's helper to come into the home, and it's hard to find that right person, which was never my goal or what I wanted to do, it made more sense for our whole family to be home together, for my husband to be home, and for him to help me and us all work together and live this life, right? What a gift for our children to have their dad home full time too, because that's a rarity. Not that it was an easy transition, but you know, 10 years later, we have some really good routines down. So Travis usually, like we got a calendar for the week, but he knows things can change. And so like last night he asked me what our plan was for today, basically for the next four or five days, just to kind of run through what's happening. And then the heavy focus is on what I need for today. What does he need to focus on to help me make happen? I knew I had to do two Q&A videos, one for YouTube, one for my membership. I had a cooking video. I started yesterday. I was hoping to finish today. Did not happen, but I'm still ending on a high note and I'm getting these Q&A videos done. So today, for example, morning routine, animals, some inside jobs, breakfast, kids table work at the kitchen table, did not get read alouds in there today because I had a phone call this afternoon at 2.30 and basically I knew from 2.30 pretty much till bedtime for this day I was going to be working. So we made sure we got a lot of stuff done earlier in the day. Then I had a phone call at 2.30. That phone call did not work out with who I needed to meet with. They had something else come up. But within that time, one of my, my top people who works for me, she handles a whole lot for me. She had some things she had just gone over and she wanted to do a Zoom call. So I think, I don't know if we were on a Zoom call for an hour or so, but anyway, that took a bunch of time and it was good to go through everything. And then I had a YouTube video I needed to get up today. Uh, by the time I got done with all of that, um, it was around five or so. And so that was just me sitting at my laptop back in the bedroom with the doors locked, <laughs> you know, on a Zoom call and doing laptop things. And then when that was done, there's some filming I did for another video that I'm working on. Uh, within that, I worked on getting our dinner ready tonight. Um, then I couldn't quite get to get the potatoes in the oven because 
Travis left with the kids earlier this evening to go to Tractor Supply and get bolts for the tractor and he had he had a list. So I asked Zion to get the potatoes in the oven. I had got the roast in the oven. I had filmed myself doing the roast, searing the roast and everything in the Instant Pot. I just don't have it in me now because earlier today I had put in uh, some concentrated energy into those raised beds. So by the time Mama runs the house, runs the breakfast, <laughs> runs the schooling, does some raised bed work, got a bunch of steps in, hoofing it around the driveway, have my phone call, do some laptop work, film for dinner, and now I'm out here. So that's my day to day. It almost sounded like I said, that's my day to day. <laughs> that is today's day, this day that is this. Tomorrow will be different. Tomorrow actually, I, I do, I have, something I need to film for about three hours, the rest of the meal prep that I was like, ah, I just don't wanna do that this evening. I'm going to film that, but then we have a bunch of projects and things going on that I will not be filming. So tomorrow, which is Saturday, as an example, I'm getting about three hours or so of filming in, but then the rest of the day, the camera won't be on at all, and we got other things we're focusing on. And as an example, Monday's gonna be a heavy filming day, and that's just the big thing I'm focusing on throughout Monday. Kids will still do school, gonna get outside, have a nice day, but like that's where I'll be focused. Tuesday, I'll be going out all day and having a work day out. Um, and I have some meetings and phone calls and things that day too. And then for the rest of the week, I'll have little pockets of filming, but it's not gonna be so many dedicated hours. Those days will be coming, but just saying I'll have like three or four days where it's a lot lighter. And then I have days where it's heavier. So again, Travis and I just go through, uh, what do I need to get done? What does he need to do to help make what I need to do happen? And actually Tra Travis and kids just came home now and uh, you'll probably hear them. They're all saying, daddy said we have to go through the basement. So that's what they're doing. So in order to facilitate that though, and because one of my goals is to still obviously be an active homeschool mama, that's my heart, uh, but Travis does things to help make that happen. So our morning routine is again, after breakfast and jobs and getting the day rolling, even though it's not in my nature, <laughs> we jump into getting our schoolwork done. Now some days we read aloud first, like we might read from 10 to 11, and then we can do table work time. And this all depends on kids' ages, okay? So table work time could be from 11 to 12, for some kids, 11 to 1, 11 to 2, or 2.30. Depends on the age and what they're working on and what their needs are. But homeschooling definitely does not take an eight hour day. And of course, in high school years, things take longer and that's fine. And then for our lighter days, after our table work time is done, then we're able to all get back outside and work on projects and fun things that are going out. Uh, I'm in this windbreaker tonight, again, our Virginia weather. It'll be 70, it'll be 45, it'll be 57, it'll be 72. But we've, we've been having beautiful weather and we are outdoor people as soon as the weather breaks. So basically March until the end of November, we're gonna be outside. Well friends, future Jim Morrell here. As I mentioned earlier, today's video is sponsored by Keto Cycle. Thanks to Keto Cycle, you have access to many recipes. For example, they have a recipe for a delicious peanut butter smoothie, and you know that I love peanut butter in all its forms, so this is definitely a recipe that I am excited to try. In addition, Keto Cycle offers a wonderful grocery list feature where you are able to organize all of your meals for the week. Be sure to click the first link in the description below. That will take you directly to Keto Cycle, where you'll be able to use special code JMORELL10. That code gives you a special 10% discount on all the Keto Cycle subscription plans. Now I know I have a wide variety of viewers, different dietary needs are represented in this viewership, so that's why I thought the Keto Cycle app would be very helpful for those of you looking to do a keto lifestyle. The Keto Cycle app is dedicated to help give you balanced meal ideas, also workout. So to do the Keto Cycle app, you click the link in the description below, use your coupon code, download your app, you are going to do a questionnaire. And that questionnaire takes into consideration the needs and preferences of each individual person. And based on your unique answers to the questionnaire, KetoCycle will make a unique keto diet plan for you. 
Whether your goal is to shed some extra pounds, cleanse your body, or get fit, Keto Cycle will provide all the necessary tools to help you achieve phenomenal results. A team of professional nutritionists create special low-carb meal plans according to your recommended calorie intake, nutritional needs, and individual preferences. Keto Cycle goes far beyond a simple low-carb diet plan. It's also a wellness guide like your own lifestyle coach right there in your pocket. Not only do you get a personalized meal plan, recipes, workout, a grocery list, a daily tracker, they also offer an introductory program for beginners, daily tips, unlimited readings, and also 24-7 support from their nutritionist in their keto community. And remember, the keto diet plan is customized according to the needs and preferences of each person. When people click on the personal link in the description below, they will have a questionnaire. And based on their responses, Keto Cycle will prepare a personalized keto diet plan. Again, use code JMORELL10 when you click the first link in the description below. You must click that link in order to get the discount. Yay! Lastly, do you ever get burned out? Where do you find your energy? Of course I get burned out. Um, I've had a big project going on, so I've been pushing really, really hard with that. And so maybe now, it's been almost two weeks ago, so I had a Saturday and even a Sunday. It was just, it was loaded deep and wide. And I woke up Saturday morning. I went to bed Friday, like I just don't even want to with this weekend. And I woke up Saturday and I was like, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna. And I didn't. And like that Saturday, I just knew I needed it. Stayed in my thrift store bathrobe all day. Uh, playing a bunch of games with the kids. I mean, of course, you know, if I have a day off, I'm still cooking because that's what I enjoy, right? So we still, I still did a bunch of big, big batch cooking and even some filming that weekend because you guys have videos of it. Uh, it was in the most recent uh, large family massive meal prep video. Like that was my off weekend where I did a lot, just lots of stuff in the roaster oven, but I always feel like well, I have to cook for my family anyway. But that was different <laughs> because that wasn't all the big hot and heavy stuff on my list that was making me feel burned out. And I did get to the hot and heavy stuff on that list, but not that weekend. I was like pajamas, resting, taking it easy. I need to do this, feet up, and that's, that's what I did. So I will definitely call the weekend off um, and I do, when I'm not in a big project, I have about three or four times a year when I get in a big project time for a couple weeks and it just seems like I'm just pushing hard, you know, foot on the gas pedal during that time. But when I'm not in those temporary big push times, we will have many just normal days, <laughs> you know, where I'm able to be mama from start to finish. You all know I'm mama all the time, but I'm not also juggling uh, these schedules and deadlines and things I have to get done. Um, it's a little gentler on me. So when I'm feeling burned out, I will just stop. I will take the weekend off. Do you ever feel like you're having a mama meltdown? I mean, that kind of to me goes along with being burnt out. If I'm worn out, if I'm tired, uh, if I just am so tired I want to cry, <laughs> then I just need to go to bed. Um, if I'm feeling, and I don't know my right wording here, um, maybe just ungrateful or if, if my perspective isn't right in reference to my children or it really could be anything in life if I'm just feeling grumpy, you know, because we all feel grumpy at times. Uh, I have had a lot of experience and walking through, again, getting a Bible verse and holding on to that and repeating it again and again. And my uh, big life-saving one that I have been using for over 20 years now is this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And also uh, one that the Lord gave me during one of the hardest times in my life ever is Exodus 14, 14, the Lord shall fight for me and I will hold my peace and remain at rest. And then, uh, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against me in judgment I shall show to be in the wrong. I've got a whole list of these in my heart and in my mind, and when I'm having trouble, 
I grab onto one and I don't let nothing else in. And just until I am turning around and that day is turning around, I am, this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I don't know, getting food ready, getting myself dressed, getting the kids set for the day. That verse is just on repeat in my mind, in my heart. Maybe I'm saying it out loud. Uh, I get myself back back where I need to be uh, emotionally and mentally and in my heart and in my mind with my perspective through meditating on God's word and chewing again and again on all these verses. Not like I have the, I have the whole Bible memorized, but I definitely have a stack of verses that are my go-to and I just roll them again and again and again. What laptop camera gear do you use or recommend to start a YouTube business? My cameras for the last couple years have been these Canon G7X. I had the Mark II for a while. I think I had two Mark IIs. You know, they drop and things happen and stuff cracks. And I have a Mark III now. And so for all those times that you all see that the screen goes blurry, we fight with that all the time. And the Mark III has an autofocus issue. Uh, but the comparable Sony one has some volume issues. I do have the Sony now. It is still in the box and I have not gotten it out to start working it into my rotation. Um, I have this camera that's got spaghetti sauce and all kinds of, all kinds of interesting things happening. So, um, and I can't tell you the Sony one that I have. It was one where I thought, okay, this one, this was like, we'll say in the last couple months I've gotten it. And again, I know it has its own issues, but I just want to try things, right? And, and upgrade equipment and such. Um, I have not upgraded as much as I could have. I did get um, an iMac. I've used them way back again, even before YouTube, when my business took off 2012, one of the first pieces of equipment I got was a MacBook Pro. And I've had two MacBook Pros in 10 years. So that tells you uh, the life of those computers. Uh, they do really, really well. And my MacBook Pro now, I think, I've been using it since 2018. It's just super. I know they they had another one that came out a few months ago. It might have been before the beginning of the year. Anyway, uh, I have not upgraded that yet. But what I did get is I got an iMac because my vision for this kitchen, I will of course work on it. But then school videos, if we want to watch a video of an eagle's nest or something, or have, have a live penguin cam on or something. I just have some, some cool things in my mind that I would, we would add to our homeschool if I had an iMac sitting there. So anyway, I don't necessarily think those things are necessary. Because I already had a MacBook Pro from my online business when I started messing around on YouTube. I think my first couple videos might have been 2014. 2014, I got like two, three, maybe four YouTube videos out. Uh, I had Daniel that year and I was doing a lot of YouTube research because I was already a pro blogger making a full-time income doing that. I just saw so much potential. Like I looked at YouTube and I'm like, there's a lot of potential here. And I saw a lot of holes and a lot of openings and I just saw like where I could, what I could do, I, I thought on YouTube. That being said, uh, I knew I would need to edit my own videos for a while because I would need to find my, my voice with it. Even though the editing was horrible, okay, I knew I had to do that. It was not something that I could hand off. Real life mama, I'm back. Uh, kids were, <laughs> kids were right by the laundry room door playing because they're kids, right? I'm like, mama's out here working. So that's how that works. What were we talking about? Equipment, okay. Because I had the MacBook Pro at that time already, I had iMovie. And so I just dumped my footage into iMovie and I learned how to edit on iMovie. I learned how to edit on iMovie by using iMovie to edit. There wasn't any training on it. I just had to get in there and push it around and figure it out. And so all my early vlogs, like uh, me making us barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen at the farmhouse with Daniel, making laundry detergent. Uh, all of those early videos, if you sort my videos to oldest, all of my videos until 
2018 I did all that editing all those years and that was part of my knowing that I needed to either grow YouTube or, or maybe get off of YouTube is you know it got to the point where the editing alone took 15 to 20 hours a week so that's one of the things to know when you start out I do think it's important to do your own editing if you need to find your voice and find figure out what you're even going to do on YouTube right but then also know it's going to that editing takes time so for me that YouTube editing and my first couple years on YouTube that was actually a hobby for me if when I get questions about what do you enjoy doing what's your hobby I I have tendency to also turn hobbies into business because that's how blogging started for me also I just got in there I wanted to figure it out I, I wanted to have a blog that people like to read and I pushed things around you know I read other blogs I guess posted on a lot of other blogs and sites online I made blogging friends and then I started another blog that exploded and quickly became a full-time business that brought my husband home full-time in 2012. And so by 2014, I was like, had had two full years of growing that beast of a business. And so YouTube for me, well, was a hobby that I enjoyed, <laughs> okay? And so, uh, you know, the editing 15, 20 hours a week, um, I, I was good with that, I liked that, I enjoyed that. I, I just kind of did it here and there and, and somehow it all worked out. Uh, but after a while, it's like, okay, if we're gonna keep doing this, I need to, need to make some changes here. So in 2018, my oldest son started editing for me and he edited for me until summer 2020 and then he had a whole other cool industry and vision and idea that he wanted to do and so he was going to do that and that's awesome again supportive mama cheerleader on the sidelines right um and then at that point i had a you didn't ask me this but here we are right i had a, another um agency you can say that i was in contact with that did my editing until summer 2021 and then around that time I wanted to get another local editor I wanted another local editor just felt like someone local I could communicate with and work with and uh, get this editing worked out fine-tune it more and that's what we've been doing since then so her next question is if you were to give advice to a beginning youtuber what would it be so my only experience I can share is if you need to find your voice and work that out creatively, you probably need to put the time into doing your own editing. Down the road, you can hire that out. Like now, I can, I can have another editor because I say, I know what I want editing wise and I know how videos should flow and you know where we need music and where I'll probably need voiceover and where I might need a graphic and those kind of things uh, but I have had to do it for a while to have that all in my head now same thing with my filming um, some people have asked if I have other people filming or if I have multiple cameras how do I get different shots and I can just see in my head like if I'm searing the meat in the instant pot well I need to get an overhead shot of flipping it and then when I take it out it would look real good if I had the camera over here and then if I got a shot of the green cutting mat and the, the red onions going into the pot it's just stuff that gets in your head from doing it for a while so laptop camera gear I mean if you can getting one of these Canon G7X models or the Sony counterpart and you can google like best vlogging cameras 2022 they're both on there I like the Canon because it has a screen on the top that flips up and the Sony has a screen like a little door on the side that flips out so you can line up your shot and see what you're doing um, I like those if you can have a MacBook Pro that's nice I think um, the most important thing with doing YouTube or any online business, and I'm sure this translates to any business in general, is actually jumping out and doing it. I don't care if you have an old GoPro, and if you have an old Windows laptop, and if you're using, boy, what did that free software, used to be one my oldest son used. If you're just using a free editing software, it doesn't matter especially when you get started because the hardest thing is to actually start and, and start doing the thing right so I know so many people who want to do videos or want to do online business or want to do this that and the other and they won't do it because they don't have all the perfect things 
or all the perfect plans. And part of why I have been able to be successful is I was just wild and crazy enough to actually just jump out and start with what I had and learn and grow and, and expand and develop along the way. I didn't wait for things to be perfect, right? We can't wait for things to be perfect uh, because we, we have to have progress and forward movement. I use TubeBuddy as far as some backend things. That's a helpful software. Tim Schmoyer and Daryl Eves are great YouTube guys. I've worked with them and um, done some trainings and such with both of them. They have free videos on their channels. And then from there, they have courses and products and such available. And over the years, I've done things with both of them. It's nice in general, even if I'm hard-headed and maybe I won't listen to everything perfectly. Um, it's nice to be around people who are doing the same work and are kind of in the same industry and speak the same language and, uh, you know, hear different points of views and things. I, when I went to the event in Utah, there was probably um, maybe 20 different YouTubers there. And, I mean, some of them were car channels. Some of them were dog training some of them you would know and some of them you you may not know and well we all spoke the same language and we all love youtube <laughs> so so it, you know it was just really nice and some of us had you know we're doing things that others haven't done yet and so we were able to speak into that and it was just real real good all the way around so connect with some other YouTubers, you know, and try, uh, this is more YouTube advice. Also like creating your own YouTube mastermind group. I haven't done that so much, but I have helped a whole lot of people get their channel started and, uh, you know, they've been able to pick my brain and I've just poured all this information into them. Um, but if you can get a couple people who are just starting or maybe already have channels and swap information and feed off each other and critique each other's videos and everything. It's just, it's helpful. Is Tobin the only redhead? So I do have, well, Daniel, I feel like is a redhead and the cat just opened the door and came on in here. Uh, Daniel's redheaded. Um, Naomi and Zion have very similar hair to Travis's, which may be the direction that Tobin's goes. I'm trying to, let me think through. Yeah. But he's just, Tobin's looking very, very redheaded. We do have red hair on both sides of the family. Where do you buy your stained glass windows from? I used to get all my stained glass windows on eBay. And you can still go on eBay and get stained glass windows. But now that Amazon is even more of a thing, a couple years ago, I looked and I could find the same windows on Amazon. Which is helpful because I got some new windows for this going to be wonderful kitchen and they just all came from Amazon these days. So I do, way back when I was pregnant with Jaden, I took a stained glass class and Travis put a uh, countertop up in our big laundry room that we had uh, with no children, you know, just the two of us. Um, and I was gonna do my stained glass there. So I did two pieces and uh, I have a small piece and a larger piece. So we have those hanging up, but all the other ones I have purchased and so usually at the just in the description if you look down in the description of my video I will have different windows and things that I have in this house that are linked with my Amazon link there what is your go-to takeout place to feed a big family when you get takeout so we actually we have a really good Chinese food restaurant minutes away so I'm telling you I feel like uh, and their buffet is open again, so that is nice. We we will go there two or three times in a month, um, especially on a Sunday. It's just nice. It's it's nice to to have Chinese food. <laughs> so there's that, and they have a good for a good variety of things. From a homeschool mom, tips for multitasking during school time. It just depends. You know, some days I can get the kids set up and they're all doing their work and I'm just sitting there like waiting for someone to need me. And I'm thinking, okay, this is a perfect example on how I could have something going on in the kitchen right now and you know, they don't need me. And then of course, you know, at times where like the next day, if I'm like, okay, I can have something going on here in the kitchen, then that, that ends up being a high needs day. So that's okay. Um, and also Travis will come in and sit. If it's a day schedule wise where I have to film, 
to get it done. You know, I have a deadline or a brand or who, who knows what other things I'm juggling. Um, you know, he comes in and fields questions and helps him move on to the next thing. And uh, we tag team like that. And sometimes I'm able to sit down at the table with them and they have their work and I'll have my laptop and I try to do emails or other things I need to get done. And then I'm sitting with them and I'm available. And sometimes that looks like I'm getting a video up. But that's really the only multitasking that I'm doing is if there's some work overlap because we share the same room uh, that needs to go on at that time. Again, that's not every day, but that might end up being, we'll say, uh, two to three days out of a five day week, one week, and the next week, one to two days where that happens. But definitely, we don't have a week where mom is not multitasking something. So we just all work together and get done what we need to get done. Any tips for transitioning kids into adulthood? Hmm. So I think it's important to discuss adulthood. I think it's important to discuss, uh, if you haven't been already, to discuss prices. You know, how much does rent cost? How much does, uh, basically, uh, some consumer math discussions. It's important to talk out plans and interest. And it's also okay for them to know that you don't have to have everything figured out just right at that 18 number. Travis and I both, as adults, did other schooling or further schooling. A lot of people, if they're really being honest, at 18, don't have their whole life plan worked out. Or if they thought they did, you know, a decade later, another decade later, uh, hindsight, things, things are a little different than what they thought. So I work to instill a lot of grace and a lot of freedom um, that there's choices that you need to make and you are also a growing human and you're still developing and you're still finding things that interest you and that's okay. Basically, it's okay and you're normal if you don't have it all figured out and if you wanna try some different things. And also, uh, I'm definitely not, I'm not a hand holder in that I'm gonna sit and, you know, call and get their electric set up and go with them necessarily when they're signing a lease and those sort of things. But I'm available and, you know, I talk a lot, I discuss any of it and troubleshooting, um, telling how things work. This is how it will work when you call to get your electric set up. You make the phone call. This is how it'll work whenever you go to sign a lease. This is how your car insurance works. Lots of conversation and uh, lots of, again, cheerleading and being there and troubleshooting. Um, and then also giving space. I mean, you know, jumping out of the nest, doing your own thing, that's cool. Okay, okay, looking good. Okay, yeah, five stars, <laughs> you know. So cheerleading and being available, there there you go. That's my, I'm not raising adult expert, but that's been my experience so far. More info about your time piecing together homeschool with the Sunlight Catalog and the library. Back in the day when I wanted to do Sunlight homeschool curriculum, and I think, I mean, the, the whole set might have been 600 to eight, nine hundred dollars, which I just absolutely, how in the world could I spend that much on homeschool curriculum for one year? My homeschool budget might have been like a hundred dollars for the year, right? And so sometimes you have more money than time, sometimes you have more time than money. So I got the Sunlight Catalog. Uh, back in the day, eBay had a company called Half.com, and I know now there's many more options, but it was for used books. And so I would look on half.com for some of the books that I would need. I would also look for the books on eBay. Um, in doing that, I also learned that a lot of the big Sunlight core sets I could buy used on eBay for half the price. I didn't start doing that quite yet. I would get with my library and reserve the books and go through there. I wasn't necessarily focused on their uh, hard copy table work but I was focused on reading their awesome book list. I really liked their book list and uh, I wanted to read all those books to my kids. So that's what I, then I would mix in copy work, uh, free worksheets that were online, other used homeschool curriculum. I've several years where I bought Matthew C. You can even piece a lot of the math together 
going online and printing off math worksheets and math curriculum. This thing called the internet. <laughs> so even though I didn't have a lot of money to spend, uh, we had a printer, we had refillable printer ink for our cartridges. And at that time, I would plan our school out for about six to 10 weeks in advance. So I would plan the 10 weeks out and then I would plan for us to have a week off. And then during that week off, I would plan the next section of weeks. And then during that time, I'd get everything printed out out that I would need for the coming weeks and it would go like that. I also would get the Rod and Staff books because those are very affordable. Also used curriculum sales, the one we have here in Virginia with, with HEAV, Home Educators Association of Virginia. It's a fantastic used curriculum sale. Uh, but I had several years of you know holding on tightly to that Sunlight catalog and getting those books used or from the library. We also did a lot of lap books and notebooking. So even though I didn't have like the sunlight binder to do the assignments that went with all the books you read, we could do lap books and notebooking and do those hands-on projects to make all of those books into different unit studies. So we would do them on, you know, Where the Red Friend Grows and Old Yeller and just a lot of our favorite books. We would do those hands-on projects with as well. Would it be better for you to buy the really big spices from Sam's Club or Costco? I know folks just really want me to buy those big spices and I have some of them. Uh, if you break down the, the unit price though, whenever I get the great value spices in the smaller containers, um, it's really just not that much of a savings. And then I have to have room for all those big containers. So I know I have a chili powder that's a big size and a parsley and a cumin, but if I'm filming a lot of videos, you know, I do, I go through a lot of onion powder and garlic powder and minced garlic. Uh, and oregano and such, and I just have a lot of little containers. And then also, I don't think about it too much. Maybe in this kitchen, I'll dedicate a whole, like I have a whole cabinet actually now. I have a whole spice cabinet and it's full and it's all the little spices. And so I don't know how I would even see and find all the big containers. I know, I'm sure there's people out there who have videos on it and have figured this out and it's really important to them, but it just hasn't been that important to me. Just so I have spices, I'm thankful. So th that's all I got for you on that. Are you still homeschooling? Yes, we are in our 17th year. We have uh, actually tomorrow is a homeschool day at a local battlefield. We have our different homeschool groups we're involved in. Today was a homeschool roller skate day. We actually didn't go to this one, but we usually go to those. Next Thursday, we have a homeschool project event evening. So lots of homeschool stuff at home, lots of homeschool stuff out and about. It really is a lifestyle, homeschool stuff everywhere. Do any of your kiddos have an IEP and how does that look in a homeschool setting? So none of my kids have an IEP, but I do have several friends whose children have needed an IEP. And what that means is they need, a, they need some local support and they need resources, they need some services. One of my friends in particular who had a kiddo who needed an IEP and some services, what I do know from her story is every so often they would have a meeting and they would check in and see how the support that kiddo got was going and if they needed other support or services. And of course, obviously that's all I can say about that, right? But I know homeschoolers who have an IEP for different reasons, it is a thing. I always point people to hslda.org if they have homeschool legal questions or special needs questions, they have all the knowledge and support and resources as far as that goes. Also in Virginia, heav.org. Uh, you can call them and they will just tell you anything in Virginia that you need to know, any kind of support in Virginia, and give you uh, some wisdom on the best route to go with that. Are you part of the Mormon church? I am not. Do you homeschool year round? Some years I feel like we do, some years I feel like we don't. Depends on the year and what's going on. So we, we, we're, we're free to, to do that and make those changes. Is there a final decision on the freeze dryer? I'm excited and fascinated by them. So yes, I'm getting a freeze dryer. I'm going to get the large model. And what I've heard about the large model is uh, it'll do three and a half nine by 13 trays of food. Since my videos where I was saying, we're gonna put it here in this kitchen, I've learned no, we're not doing that. It's gonna go in the basement. 
and I have to actually, I need to send another email about the freeze dryer, but the freeze dryers are come in and that's definitely something we're gonna add into life. I plan to just keep that bad boy going in the basement. And I heard that some runs go for like 16 or 24 hours, so we'll be learning about that. Will the older kids cook more in the big kitchen once there's more space? You know, my kids do help with things and they do cook and they do things in the kitchen, but again, I don't know the rule book for this. I just go by what my mama intuition tells me and as much as possible, I want to protect their privacy. And people will ask, you know, why, why are you doing this? Are you doing that? Well, for that video, I am doing that. Uh, but it doesn't mean that a kid can't wash potatoes and get them in the oven as well. But I'm not gonna show that in a video. I think recently I might have shown Liam scrambling some eggs or something, but you know, a little glimpse here and there, but I don't want to share a bunch of details of their life and have the camera in their face and make that a big pressured focus. And I don't want to share a lot of family details um, and like what their hopes and dreams are. I do have some questions in here. I won't even like fully read them, but Long story short, what are my children's hopes and dreams? What are they doing educationally once they become adults? What jobs are they doing? Or do, where do they work? Where do they want to work? I, I don't wanna share that. So that's that's my boundary, right? Like I'm, I'm good chatting my mega mama kitchen. I'm good chatting certain things that I feel comfortable chatting about. And then there's things that people may wanna know, but I don't have to share them and that's okay. Again, that's a, that's my boundary, okay. So, and we all like in life, I'm sure, you know, we all have people we have to deal with and you have to have set boundaries up for people and time. And so my online boundary is drawn when it comes to personal details about my family, all of those, all of those things. So if you wanna uh, watch me and watch me cook a lot of food and chat with me, that's very possible, that's what we do a lot of, but not when it comes to what all these people who live here with me are doing. And you know, sometimes I have wondered, what am I, can I even do what I'm doing then? But I just have to trust, again, that I'm where I need to be, and so far I'm still doing it, and uh, people may prefer to watch channels where it is the whole family, and the family's involved, and the family's doing a lot of things, and that's cool, because there's lots of those channels. But I decided several years ago to go in this direction. Really, it was 2018. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go about this a little different, but I'm, I'm still here. People still watch my videos and still come to see what I'm chatting about, and uh, we do these Q and A's, and we do a lot of cooking, and we do a lot of shopping, and it's not all up in my family's business, and that's just uh, where I have peace in all of this. And is the pool done? The pool has been done. I have shown the pools and the pool in videos. Um, I think I did a day in the life video. Maybe I mean Tobin was young, so maybe it was last spring or last summer, and I showed the pool. I've shown the pool in different videos. I shared how I was getting the pool. I shared the story on how we ordered it April or May of 2020, and it didn't come until end of October 2020. Where usually it's a couple week thing, but you know, whole world changed and I shared how we were gonna build it, and so we did build it, but again, because my whole family was involved, it was a whole family project, I didn't, I didn't do a video about it um, for their privacy, right? We just wanted to build the pool and not have to have the pressure of filming it or explaining why we were doing things we were doing or just answering pool questions, because we're, we're learning as we go. Travis was watching YouTube videos, uh, you know, we, 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 we figured it out, and uh, you know, full of water, and we've used it, and it was super. Um, and we're getting ready. It's again March now, so you know May we'll be opening it up again. Um, I think this year, what Travis wants to do in reference to the electrical, he's doing some different electrical things out there. I believe he's talking about setting up a solar thing uh, so that we can heat the water, like maybe more October-ish. Uh, that's an option, but again, not an expert. Won't be doing a video about it. But that's some pool things that are happening. So yeah, the pool's here. Pool's great. We use the pool. I made sheet pan eggs and they came out dry. Any tips? Just try to pull them out a minute or two sooner. And Travis 
likes to spray the top of them with nonstick spray. Um, I did some recently in 15 minutes. I mean, they were perfect for like sandwiches, but if you want a more like an egg that you would eat by itself, just, you know, check on at the 12 minute mark or so and just pull it out a little sooner. Are you getting one of those nifty countertop ice machines that make Sonic ice? We have been ice machine shopping. Travis has several saved. Let us know in the comments. Link your favorite, tell me your favorite ice machine. Um, I've kind of, I get lost in reviews, but yes, the, the commercial refrigerator that we've got is 47 cubic feet. It is just a refrigerator, which, you know, a light of my eyes, I am so excited. But it doesn't have um, the water that comes out of it, which we never hooked this water up for the last two years, and or an ice maker, so we're gonna get an ice maker. Tell us what to get. Will you do canning food preserving video or videos? Yes, I will be doing more of those. I've been working on some canning. I haven't caught any of it on film because again, it was kind of just like my time. Um, I had shared in a recent video, I wanted to get the canner going and I have two canners, but I wanted to get have a canner going during our school time too, but we just got the stove top replaced. So today I've got something cooking that tomorrow I'm gonna get the canner going and can. Um, so you'll probably be seeing some of that. When you wean a toddler any tips, extended breastfeeding can be hard. So I don't purposely wean my kids. I just don't, you know, <laughs> I know that they're going to naturally wean. And so the longest any of my kids have gone has been right around three. My mom breastfed me until right around three and she just said I was kind of done. And so, like again, Tobin now, he's not nursing every two hours. He's probably nursing four or so times a day, but it is very hard, uh, you know, unless I take him in my room and the lights are off and he can't hear anybody. If there's noise and action, he wants to be a part of it or watch it. There's a lot of noise and action here. So he's definitely nursing at night when he goes to bed. And in the morning, when I set my alarm and get him up a little earlier, some nights he'll still sleep all night with me co-sleeping. And so then he'll get a couple extra nursing sessions in or he doesn't wake up again till morning. And so then during the day, it feels like it's hit or miss already, but we might do this for another year or so, kind of like how it is now. And he eats, you know, th three meals a day and we'll eat a whole um, sweet potato. This morning for breakfast, he had applesauce and yogurt. No problem with the kid eating. So I haven't had a toddler that I'm trying to wean and that I'm struggling to wean. So I'm not, I'm not the mama to ask in that respect. Um, I just, again, with all my kids, we've naturally weaned and eventually they're done. You know, eventually we miss a night nursing before bed. And then maybe the next day it'll be the same pattern, but then we miss a morning nursing uh, first thing in the morning. And then we're back to, okay, well maybe we're only nursing at bedtime. And just eventually we just sleep and we're done. Sad, but that, that's how it goes here. Your top five channels to watch when you have free mama time. Uh, again, lately I've been watching about Cooney Cooney Picks and there's this lady in Australia I've been watching pig butchering videos, but I want to tell you her channel because it's it's good and she she's written some books and I bought them both. Okay, so I've been watching a lot of Fantel Valley Homestead. It says, grow food, live free, new videos every Monday and Friday, usually. I like her, I like her already. So it's a family that's in New Zealand on the coast of the South Island of New Zealand on 10 acres. Okay, and so she's got a lot on here about, well here, look at this, beeswax wraps that work. She's got a lot of stuff I haven't watched yet. Her videos I want to watch are how to set up a colony for meat rabbits on a homestead. See, cause we've, been, we've done some rabbit things and so instead of the cages, I think, but here I am sharing. I think eventually I'd like to do a rabbit colony. Now eventually may look like next month or next year, but um, I like the colony setup. So I've been uh, keeping my ears out. She's got a lot on Cooney Cooney pigs and uh, pigs and goats and what she wished she knew and pig shelters and stuff. And, and she wrote the book on Cooney Cooney pigs. So again, if, uh, if that's your jam, if you think you'd be interested in that, and her videos, you all should go over and give her her love. Like some of her videos are like, she's got a whole one 
how to stock your pantry, beautiful canned stuff. She only has 394 views. She should have a lot of views on that video. So I, I've probably watched 10 of her videos and I bought both her books. So I am like her ideal customer. She's got a book on Cootie Cootie Pigs and she's got the Rabbit Colony book. And, and I have them now in my possession. But like I said, I'm reading the Cooney Cooney one. And then what else? I've been watching lots of pig videos. I watched, of course, Justin Rhodes had a lot on American guinea hogs. And um, no, it wasn't American guinea hogs, was it? Idaho pasture pig. So I've been watching through some of his videos on that. And there's a couple on here that have done a lot of home butchering of their small, homestead pigs and so I've watched that. Of course I watch Sarah because Sarah Sarah's my friend in real life. I've watched Sarah's videos on our tribe of many. Sometimes I'm I'm behind right now but I get on I'll get on a kick where I'm watching Kimberly's videos on the wads. Sometimes I watch Tiffany from Beauty and the Beastins. Watch a wide variety. You know I could I could give a shout out to, to all kinds of YouTubers. Basically so many of them are in the mom space or the farming homesteading space. Well, this week it's been those channels that I have that I have given you. Um, do you budget for clothes for each kid? A set amount. How do you budget for birthdays and gifts? So usually, for each birthday, this is roundabout. Um, each birthday is probably three hundred to five hundred dollars. That could also include like an experience gift. Some people think I don't do a lot of stuff for my kids' birthdays or do a lot of presents or fun things for them because I don't show it. But again, for privacy, you know, that's why I haven't since 2018 or so. But before that, I would do some birthday vlogs and, you know, I would show us going to the trampoline park or going roller skating or doing other fun things. Before 2020, for each birthday, the kids could pick an experience. And it would be, uh, maybe it would be just our family, but many times, you know, it would be for friends. And roller skating for a while, because we can rent the whole room, and you know, you can have 50 friends come, and you get the place for two hours. Uh, we did several roller skating parties. We did bowling parties. We did trampoline parties. Some feedback, Jamrel doesn't even have her kids' friends at the birthday parties. and. Well, that's because I'm not showing my kids friends, okay? So uh, even for those videos. But until 2020, we were having uh, a lot of just fun kids would pick a destination, you know, local destination. When I say destination, it's like, is it bowling? Is it trampoline park? Is it roller skating? Is it the jump park? Is it, uh, is it the lake? You know, where, where, where you want to have it? And then invite all the friends and have the event there. So then 2020 was different. We were back to home birthdays. And then, well, 2020 and most of 2021, I feel like. And so now I do have some kids asking, you know, roller skating party and other local party options. And so we might be getting back into that. But like most people, you know, things were open and it wasn't an option for almost for two years there. Are you getting a pot filler above your stove? I sure am. That's it hanging crooked, but it'll, it'll be tucked in the wall appropriately. What time does your school day finish with your children? So again, I, I mentioned, you know, it might be two or 2.30, sometimes it's three. Just again, depends on the day, what I need to do work-wise and life-wise and uh, what kids need to do. And that's the nice thing with older children, they can have assignments that take longer. Uh, they can take their work back to their desk or they can sit at the kitchen table. I will have a couple kids that, you know, maybe it's four and it takes them that long to get everything done. And that's okay. We have, we have that flexibility. Creating a homeschool diploma, any recommended resources? So either HSLDA or HEAV.org, they both have transcript services that you can use for a small fee and get you your official transcript. And then we have used HSLDA's diploma service and we have it printed through them. Thank you to KetoCycle for sponsoring today's video. Go to ketocycle.diet forward slash Jamerell Stewart Use code JMORELL10. This promo code gives a 10% discount to all subscription plans.